what's up everybody? Ben here from blogwithben.com and today I'm partnering with Name Hero Web Hosting to bring you this step-by-step -step tutorial on how to fix a stuck all-in-one WP migration import. And this is hands down the best plugin that you could use to migrate your WordPress website, but at times there may be some technical issues hindering the import. And this video will show you some ways to troubleshoot and fix the problem so that you could successfully import your site's content. And as you're watching this video, Name Hero has an extremely helpful blog post that walks you through this process. And I'll link to it in the video description below, but it's a great reference if you need some extra clarification on how to go through these steps that we're about to cover in this video. And finally, if you get any value out of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. It helps me bring you more resources and it keeps you up to date with all of the WordPress and tech trends happening throughout the year. But either way, thank you so much for all your support. All right, with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so when you try to import your site file to your new WordPress site using the updated version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin, you may run into some issues like the upload limit for your WordPress installation is insufficient or the import gets stuck at a certain percentage or doesn't even begin. It's frustrating, I know. But hopefully these steps we're about to cover will work for you and get the ball rolling on your site migration. Now real quick, I should point out that Name Hero offers one complimentary website migration within the first 30 days of placing your order for a starter plus turbo or business cloud hosting plan. Simply fill out this form and Name Hero will perform the migration free of charge. And I'll link to the form in the video description below, but I just wanted to point that out if you've hit multiple roadblocks in your migration and you just want the pros to handle it. However, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, let's go through some steps that can help you fix a stuck all-in-one WP migration import. Okay, so first things first, I've already exported my site's files. I'm not gonna go through that process in this tutorial because I'm assuming you've already done that as well since you're having an issue with the import, but I just wanted to point that out before we got started. Okay, so the first troubleshooting tip is to change your PHP upload limits. And if you're trying to import a larger site, then you may get an error that your PHP upload limit is too low. So to fix this issue, head over to your cPanel and you can easily access it within your Name Hero dashboard by clicking on the Log into cPanel link. Then from here in the upper right corner of your cPanel, there's a search field that lets you search for tools by keyword. So go ahead and type PHP in that field. Then from the results, click on Select PHP Version and this will take you to your PHP selector. This is where you can manage the versions of PHP being used on your domains, as well as other configuring options, and that's what we wanna do. So within this dashboard, click on the Options tab, and then from here, you're gonna to wanna to change the upload max file size and post max size. By default, mine are set to 512 megabytes, but if you click on the numbers there, you can increase it all the way up to two gigs. But for this example, I'm going to select one gig. And then when you do, you'll get this green success notification in the upper right corner, letting you know that the limit has been changed. Then go ahead and do the same thing for the max file size. And perfect. Then some other things you may wanna consider changing are the memory limit and max execution time. Increasing both of these could help if you're still running into limit issues or getting timed out of your import. Now I'm leaving these alone for now, but that's just something to think about if you're still running into issues after increasing the max file size and post max size limits. Okay, the next troubleshooting tip is a workaround for the import getting stuck or halted altogether. And what we're gonna do next is use an older version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin to restore a backup of the import. And the reason we're using an older version of the plugin is that the backup restore feature has been moved to the premium tier of the plugin, meaning you have to pay for the premium version of the plugin in order to use the backup restore feature. So what this workaround is doing is it's essentially leveraging the beauty of WordPress's open source repository so that we can download, configure, and use an older version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin to restore a backup and import the site files to our new WordPress press environment. And once again, Name Hero's blog post on this topic is a great resource because it also provides a direct link to the older version of the plugin. 
Simply click this link in the article and the plugin should automatically download to your computer. It'll be a zip file. But if you click on this link and nothing happens like it did for me, I think it's because I'm using a new version of the Chrome browser and I have some security and pop-up settings engaged. So if you click on this and nothing happens, simply right click on the hyperlink and select copy link address. Then open a new browser tab, paste the link in the browser, click enter on your keyboard, and the download will initiate and you'll get the zip file of the 6.7 version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin. All right, now that we have the plugin, head over to the WordPress site that you want to import to and install and activate the plugin. And I'm currently at the homepage of the WordPress site that I'm importing to because I want you to see that after we go through these steps, the import does in fact work and the files are migrated over to NameHero. All right, but first we need to install and activate the 6.7 version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin. So let me head over to the WordPress dashboard. Now keep in mind that if you currently have the most up-to-date version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin installed and activated on your site, you're gonna need to deactivate it and remove it from your plugins before installing this version of the plugin, just FYI. Okay, so let's add this plugin. And I know these steps are pretty novice, but I just wanna cover all my bases. So within your WordPress dashboard on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over plugins and click on add new. Then towards the top of the screen, click the upload plugin button. Then click the choose file button and find the zip file that we just downloaded. It'll be named all-in-one WP migration 6.7. There we go, then click the Install Now button. And after it's been successfully installed, click the Activate button. And then you'll see that we in fact now have an active, out of date version of the plugin. You'll obviously get this notice, but you can tell that we're now using version 6.77 of the all in one WP migration plugin. Okay, next I wanna go over a quick tip that helped me a ton when trying to get this older version of the plugin to work. For some reason, when I tried to restore a backup of the import on my site using the 6.7 version of the plugin, I was still hitting limits and the import was failing, even though I had increased all of my file upload and memory limits within my web host. So the trick here is to increase the maximum upload file size limit of the plugin. Once I did this, my import of the restored backup went through seamlessly, and it's super easy to do. So first, you'll need to head over to the plugin editor, and depending on the version of WordPress you're using, this may be under the plugin section of your dashboard, but in my version, it was located under the tools menu item. So hover your mouse over tools and select plugin file editor. And then the built-in file editor allows you to view or change any plugin PHP code in the large text box there. Now, you'll get this warning about editing the plugin files. We know what we're doing here, so go ahead and click the I understand button. Next, you'll wanna make sure you're editing the correct plugin. So in the upper right corner of the editor, there will be a drop-down menu where you can select the plugin you wanna edit. Simply click on it and select the all-in-one WP migration plugin from that list. Then click the select button and the plugins files and code will appear. You can also tell which plugin you're editing here just to confirm before you start making changes. Next, from the plugin files list, select constant.php and this will open the file in the text box on the left hand side. Then the line of code we want is on line 284. So scroll down a bit until you find it. It'll look like this. And if you're having trouble finding it, you could always use the command F feature and then search for the keyword max file size and you should be able to find it. All right, and then once you do find it, all you're gonna do here is change the number 28 to something in the 30s. I changed it to 34. Just like that. Then click the update file button at the bottom of the screen. And you should get a notification that the file was successfully edited. 
Next, it's time to upload our exported site file to the plugin. This was the whole reason for installing the older version of the plugin so that we could restore the exported site file via the backup feature. So what we need to do next is manually upload the exported site file to the plugin via our cPanel. So once again, let's head back to your cPanel and this time open the file manager. Then from your list of site files, find the domain or subdomain that you're importing to and open it. Then open the WP content file. And then from here, open the AI1WM backups file. And then this is where we're going to upload the site file that we exported. Again, I didn't show that part of the process in this video, but this is the file that you want to import to the new site, just FYI. Okay, next go ahead and click the upload button towards the top of the screen. And then you'll have the option to select the file or drag and drop it here to start the upload. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the file here really quick. And then depending on your file size, the time to upload may vary. So I'm gonna speed through this for the sake of time. And then once 100% completed, the loading progress bar will turn green and the file will now be accessible via the plugin. So let's head back to WordPress. And then this time hover your mouse over all-in-one WP migration and click on backups. And check that out. So far so good. Our manual upload of the site file is listed as a backup. Next, it's time to restore this file, essentially importing the site files to this new WordPress environment. So in the upper right corner of the screen, there will be three buttons. Click on the middle one, which is the restore button, and the plugin gets to work and begins the import. Now you will get this notice just to make sure you wanna proceed, we do. So go ahead and click the proceed button, and the import gets underway. Now, depending on your site's file size, the time it takes to import may vary. My site is relatively small, so it doesn't take very long, but once it's done, you'll get this notice letting you know that the import was successful and that you must save your permalink structure twice. This is very important. It sounds weird, but it's something that you are required to do. So go ahead and close this notice by clicking the close button. Then head over to your permalinks. On the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over settings and click on permalinks. Then WordPress logged me out whenever I did this. I'm not sure if that happens on your end, but if it does happen, just log back into WordPress and follow the same steps to access your permalinks. Then all you're gonna do here is click the save changes button at the bottom of the screen two separate times. So let's click it once. There we go. Then a second time. And perfect, we get the notice that the permalink structure has been updated. And then this time, when we visit the front end of my site, you'll see that the theme, content, and site structure have been successfully imported. So this tells me that the workaround worked and our import and migration was a success. You can now move forward with your new site. And one final thing, I highly recommend updating the all-in-one WP Migration plugin to its current version after you're done using the older version or completely remove it from your plugins. You don't want an outdated plugin sitting on your site for security purposes. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're thinking about starting a blog, you gotta check out my step-by-step -step tutorials. They'll show you everything you need to know in order to build, grow, and monetize a professional WordPress blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.